Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to InfoGamer. For this lesson, we're going to keep building our tic-tac-toe game. In the last video, we showed you how to create the winner check function, which is a function that we are calling at the end of every player's turn. And this function runs through an algorithm that checks all the possible ways for a player to win the game. In this video, we want to expand on that lesson and create what we will call the winner display function. This function will allow us to display everything visually required to show that there's a winner to our tic-tac-toe game. And so that's what we're going to be doing, and let's get started. So here we have our tic-tac-toe project open inside of Unity, and the first thing that we want to do is create the visual elements that we will be displaying. And so I'm going to expand our canvas game object and then select our grid game object. Now this grid game object, I want to size down just a little bit so that we have some room to display some text that will say player X has won the game or player O has won. And so I'm going to size it down to something like 800 in width and 800 in height because we want it to be square. We can also reposition this grid so that we have more room up at the top of our screen. So I'm going to move down the grid to something like negative... Um, let's try one, negative 75. The next thing that we want to do is create the text game object. So I'm going to right click on canvas, go to UI and then select text. We can then rename this game object to something like winner text. The next thing that we can do is change the text value. So I'm going to say something like player X wins and I'm going to leave it with this exclamation point. We can then scale or size up this text box to be something like a thousand in width and something like 200 in height. We then want to scale up the font size. So to do this, I'm going to click on best fit and then change the max size to 200. We also want to center the alignment in the horizontal and vertical directions. We can then change the color to something like a solid black, which is a little boring, but I'm gonna leave it up to you to be creative with this game. The last thing that we want to do is move up this text game object so it's up at the top of our screen. So I'm gonna grab the Y position, just move it up, something like right about there, maybe 450. That looks pretty good. The next visual element that we want to create for our game are the winning lines. These are lines that go across our grid to mark which three in a row won the game. And so to do this, I'm going to right click on our canvas, go down to empty game object. We can then rename this game object to something like winning lines. I then want to position this game object at the exact same transform of our grid, which is zero in the X position and negative 75 in the Y position. And so I'm going to select our winning lines game object and change it to zero in the X position and negative 75 in the Y position. We can then right click on the winning lines game object and then select UI and image. We then want to size up this image so that it's more like a line rather than a box. And so I'm going to change the width to something like 900 and then the height to be something like 25. We can then change the color to something that's a little more vibrant. So I'm going to just select a solid red and that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and change the name of this game object and I'm going to call this one H1 for horizontal one. The next thing that I want to do is reposition this line so that it goes across the top row of our grid. So for the Y position, let's type in something like 265. And that looks like it goes across the top. And I picked 265 because the width and height of our grid is 800. So 265 puts it right about at a third. And so the next thing that we want to do is duplicate this game object. So I'm gonna duplicate it once. I'm gonna change the name of this one to be H2 for horizontal two. This one we want to be right through the middle. And so I'm going to change the Y position back to zero. And let's go ahead and duplicate this game object and then rename it to H3. 
and then change the y position to be something like negative 265. The next thing that we want to do is duplicate another one of these game objects and then let's rename this to be v1 and then what we want to do is flip the width and height so this is going to be 25 in the width and 900 in the height. We can then make sure that the position in the y direction is at zero and since this is v1 we want it to be the left the far left column and so let's type negative 265 and then we can go ahead and duplicate this game object change its position in the x direction to be 0 and the y to be 0 and then we can rename it to be v2 and then let's duplicate that one again and change the name to be v3 and change the x position to be positive 265 and the y position to be 0. The last thing that we need to do is create the diagonal lines and so I'm going to duplicate this game object another time and type D1 for diagonal 1 and then we can make sure that the x position is at 0 and the y position is at 0 and then all we have to do to get this line at a diagonal is to change the rotation and so I'm going to change the z rotation to be 45. And then you can see that since this line is on an angle, it needs to be a little bit longer. So I'm going to change the height to be something like 1,000, maybe even more, so like 1,200. Now all we have to do is duplicate this diagonal line one more time, and let's rename it to be D2, and then let's change the rotation to be a negative 45. The last thing that we want to do before we get to the code is disable all these visual elements that we've just now created so that within our code we can enable them to display that there's a winner. And so I'm going to select all the lines that we've created and then click this box up here next to the name and then select our winner text and also click that box. Now we can go ahead and open our game controller script in Visual Studios. Once you have your game control script open in Visual Studios, the first thing that we want to do is create some variables to hold these visual game objects so that we can enable them. And so the first thing that we want to do is create a public text game object, and this is going to be for the winner, winner text. The next variable that we want to create is going to be a public game object, and this is going to be an array, so we want square brackets, and we can call this winning lines. We can then add in some comments. So this one will be holds the text component of the winner text. We can then add a comment for this variable to be holds all the different lines for showing that there is a winner. Now that we've created these variables, let's go ahead and create the winner display function. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom, and then right after our winner check function, let's create the winner display function. So I'm going to type void and then winner display, and then parentheses and curly braces. Now there's a few things that we're going to need to know for this function. Firstly, we need to know which player won the game. And then secondly, we need to know which solution it was that won the game so that we can determine which line to turn on. And so to know which player won the game, we have the whose turn variable. So we're going to be using that one. And then to determine which solution it was that won the game, we have this I index variable from our for loop. And so in order to have this value within our winner display function, we have to create a parameter to our function. And so within the parentheses of our winner display function, we're just going to create an int variable. And then we can call this just index index in. Now we don't need to create a parameter for the whose turn variable because this function will already have access to that variable because it's a global variable within our script. And so we can just leave it at that. So the first thing that we want to do is enable our text game object. And so I'm going to type winner text dot game object dot set active 
and then set it equal to true. The next thing that we want to do is determine whose turn it is so that we can then change the value of this text game object to either say something like player x wins or player o wins. And so I'm going to create an if statement and inside this if statement we can check to see if whose turn is equal to zero and that will be for the x player so then we can change the winner text game object dot text and that will access the text value and we can set it equal to quotes player x wins with an exclamation point and then we want to leave it with a semicolon then we want to check else if whose turn is equal to one that will be for player o we can say winner text dot text equals quotes player o wins exclamation point semicolon the next thing that we want to do is use this index in parameter to turn on the line associated with the solution that won the game. And so to do this, we will use our winner lines, winning lines variable, and we're going to access the index of index in like this. And we can then set this element of the array to active. So we'll say set set active parentheses true. The last thing that we want to do inside this function is make sure that none of the other buttons are interactable once we find a winner. And so to do this, we need to create a for loop and this will be int i equals zero semicolon. i is less than tick tick tac toe spaces dot length and then semicolon i plus plus and then curly braces and inside this for loop we need to access the tic-tac-toe spaces array and access it by the index i and then we need to say dot interactable and set it equal to false now the last thing that we need to do for our script is call this function and we want to call this function inside our if statement that we find a solution to be true and so we can actually just replace this debug.log statement with the winner display function but we also want to make sure that we pass in the index i to this function so i will then become index in inside this function so that's everything that we need for our code we can go ahead and save this and go back to unity now the last thing that we need to do for Unity is set the variables that we created. And so I'm going to select our game controller script and then find our winner text variable and select our winner text game object and drag that into that field. We then want to expand our winning lines. And then I'm actually going to lock the inspector by clicking on this lock up here. And then I'm going to select all the line game objects and drag it onto the whose line variable and that will set the eight different elements of this array. Now the only disclaimer with this variable is that you want to make sure that the game objects are in the same order as the solutions array. If they're not in the same order, then when you find one solution, it'll actually turn on a different line. And so your lines and your solutions won't match up. So now that we have all these variables set, let's play our game and see if it works. And it looks like there is something wrong. When we downsized our grid, we didn't downsize each button. And so we need to go back to our grid game object. And I'm going to unlock our inspector. Now we need to change the cell size to be something that's like one third of 800. So I'm going to change it to 265 because that's about one third. And then 265 for the Y. And we can then go ahead and play our game and see if it works now. And there we go. That looks a lot better. All the buttons are the correct size. Now let's go ahead and play through our game. And there we go. It says player X wins up at the top and we have a red diagonal line going through all three X's. Now there is something weird going on with the other unmarked buttons in our game. And I think this is because our disabled color for the buttons is a solid white. 
and since we are for looping through all the buttons and setting them to be disabled, the buttons that are normally transparent when they're unmarked are being changed to a solid white. And so to fix this, rather than doing that for loop, let's create a winner panel that we'll actually put in front of the grid. And because we put that panel in front of the grid, it'll make it so that none of the buttons are interactable. And so I'm going to right click on our canvas and select UI and then panel. We can then type in a new name, let's say winner panel. And we can attach our winner text to this game object. And then what we can do is if we don't want the panel to be this faded white, we can turn the alpha channel down to zero. Now the last thing that we need to do to fix this problem is go back to our script and let's create a new public game object. And let's call this winner, winner panel. And then what we can do is in our winner display function, rather than enabling the winner text game object, what we can do is just enable the winner panel, and then we can enable the winner text game object in the hierarchy. And then what we'll do is we'll delete this for loop. So now let's go ahead and save this and we'll go back to Unity and let's turn on the winner text. So I'm gonna select the winner text and click that checkbox. And then what we can do is select our winner panel and disable it. Last thing that we need to do is assign our winner panel variable to the new variable that we created. So right there, winner panel is now equal to the winner panel game object. And let's play through our game one more time. Now this time I'm gonna have the O player win. So I'm gonna click X, O, X, and then O, X, O. There we go, it says player O wins, which is really cool because previously it said player X wins, and we have a horizontal line going through a different spot on our grid. Let's play it through it one more time and do a win in a new location. So let's say X, O, mm, X, O, X, O, X. There we go, player X wins. And also the buttons are no longer interactable. So I can't click these two empty spots and have it mark. And that's because we have this invisible image, which is the winner panel that is displayed in front of the grid. All right, there we go. That's everything that we're gonna cover in this video for the winner display function. I hope you were able to follow along and that everything made sense. If you have any questions, make sure that you leave them in the comments below. Also make sure that you like this video and subscribe to our channel so you can get regular updates when we publish new videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.